in an effort to illustrate the earliest known practices of Christian baptism, we have constructed a video of what the process would have looked like, condensed into a six-minute movie. The sponsor assumes the responsibilities for the catechumen, who is given a Bible as acceptance, then is marked on the forehead with a cross, given and signed with salt, and finally, the candidate experiences the traditional and scriptural component of laying on of hands. To bid the devil to leave the person, as they inevitably had a demonic presence since they were previously heathens, a priest would pray the demon out while blowing on the candidate. This is mirrored in the actions of Abba Anthony, one of the first Christian monks who blew demons away as well. It was customary for catechumens to wait at least three years, though much longer in many cases, as the passions of youth and the perceived inevitability of sin kept those who were not absolutely certain they could handle the radical lifestyle change from being baptized. It was a common belief that sins committed after baptism had no way of being forgiven. During this waiting period, catechumens were still expected to be active church members. Though they were only allowed into the first parts of Mass, they could receive instruction, prayer, some rites such as being anointed with the oil of catechumens, and could spread the gospel. The godparents of a candidate must answer to the bishop for the actions of the applicant. Vices are unacceptable. In order for the name of the candidate to be written in the book of the church, the candidate must be free from issues like drunkenness and untrustworthiness. More exorcisms were required throughout the process. These could become a near daily practice for the catechumen, with the devils being drawn out slowly over time. If the candidate failed these tests, which might look like going pale, foaming at the mouth, or weeping, it would be assumed that the devil still had a continuing hold. Attendance at Lenten worship services was expected at all times during this seven-week period. The bishop would teach the creed to the candidates, small sections at a time. These pieces were memorized with the help of the godparents, as writing anything down would risk uncovering the secrets to someone outside of the church. On Monday, Thursday, four days before their baptism, catechumens were encouraged to bathe after their Lenten penance because, in the words of St. Augustine, their bodies could not be handled at the fount without offending the senses. On Easter Saturday, the eve of the big day, the candidates performed their final rites. This includes saying the Lord's Prayer, reciting the Creed both from memory, choosing a baptism name, and being anointed with oil. The Ephetha, a small practice of touching the mouth and ears of the candidate, was reminiscent of Jesus' healing of the leper in Mark 7. To begin the Easter baptism ceremony, the catechumen would kneel, raise their arms in prayer, and renounce sin. The actual renunciation would vary according to the liturgical history, but most included Satan, works, vanity, and worldly worship. Turning to the East, the candidate then announces what they do believe in. A Trinitarian statement was followed by a profession of belief about the power of baptism. Much like Christ on the cross or Adam in the garden, the catechumen is stripped naked, ideally without shame. Now nude, the catechumen is covered with oil. This was to signify the gift of the Holy Spirit, though also sometimes viewed as a symbol of Christ as the true olive branch, or reminiscent of an athlete preparing to compete. For many early churches, the original blessing of the water actually invoked the Holy Spirit into the fountain much as the true body and blood of Christ is present in the early Eucharist, and still is in the Catholic tradition. Other liturgical practices simply believed it was necessary to use consecrated water, though it may not have invoked the actual spirit. The actual baptism act involved the candidates standing in the water and usually bowing to immerse themselves. This showed humility and rebirth, as if the water was a new womb. The catechumen would either immerse themselves three times, or the priest would pour water three times over their head to symbolize the three persons of the Trinity. A profession of faith also typically occurred while still in the fount. While some practice anointing with myrrh before the actual baptism, most poured the mixture of oil and balsam over the head after the fact. This signified that God was the owner of the new member. While not practiced in most areas, several places had a foot washing ceremony after the myrrh. This is based on the washing of the disciples' feet that Jesus performs, though not all agreed with the idea of humble service to the neophyte during the liturgy. Once the ceremony was essentially complete, the neophyte was given pure white clothes to wear. There were many interpretations of this, 
from Isaiah claiming God would clothe him in salvation, to Christ transfigured on the mountain. While there is little evidence of it, it is assumed that most neophytes were given a lighted candle to signify that they were now enlightened by Christ. While the process of confirming one's baptism varied greatly, and still does, in many areas the bishop would mark the neophyte's forehead to signify that the Holy Spirit had come upon him. With most baptistries set apart from the church, and because catechumens were not invited to the whole church, this time would be their introduction to their new community. They would greet the new member with a kiss of peace, which was remarkably hard to depict using a flannel graph. At their first mass, the neophytes would be given three different chalices. One would contain the traditional wine, one with water, and one with a milk and honey mixture. The interpretation of this varied from symbolizing Christ's flesh, alluding to the land flowing with milk and honey, and the spiritual milk that new believers need. The final act of a new believer was to take the full Eucharist with their church, but that is a different video entirely. Thanks for watching!